Hey everybody, it's Steve. Fresh off of the max and fresh off of work. I'm back at work for the first time in almost a year. Now granted, I'm, I've gotten so many of these videos done that I'm like a month ahead, so it's April now that you're watching the video, but it's about mid-March that I'm doing it. And I figured I've got a little bit of a walk home to do, so I might as well do a today's episode i might go a little bit dark at random times because it's nighttime but hey you're here for the story not to see my beautiful face it is april 14th 2021 and as you know it's another day Did i just belch a little bit I'm sorry another day another story but before we get to that of course as always i'm a small channel if you want to help me grow remember as always to like share subscribe hit up my patreon if you want to help me out that way the link is in the description below and i'm always posting new stuff there to give you some bang for your buck also the links to my facebook and instagram pages are linked below closely related to the content that i'm producing for this channel as well as my main channel see the amateur story and i'm looking very two-faced right now because there's no light coming from this direction but anyway i've got a nice little uh a nice story for you guys today. Something very, very fishy. That joke will make sense in a second. Very, very sketchy. So anyway, our story. Figured I'd turn my camera forward since there's more to see ahead of me than trying to see my dark face just gone in the in the lack of light but we're going back to april 14th 1903 victoria british columbia near the the sea as it were there was a a station there and workers at this station were noticing something very interesting floating around in the water and it was reported from there that there was a roughly 60 foot long serpent that you know would periodically pop up out of the water so that people could see them uh, one of the workers at the station described the general body of the creature as almost looking like a massive piece of seaweed which you know seaweed is kind of you know just long so was, i could see that making sense of this is almost like a snake-like serpent uh, creature. However, the most interesting aspect of this is that there were claims that the head of the serpent was like that of a horse. Seriously. I'm telling you right now, back around the turn of the century, there were serpents with horse heads floating around in the water up and up off British Columbia. That was the claim. And the claim was the horse head that this creature had was roughly the size of a barrel. So, you know, like a big barrel or like, you know, the kind of barrel that they'd used to use for kegs back then. And, you know, probably about that far up off the ground. Pretty good size head on a 60 foot long serpent. Just bizarre. This, this is some, you know, this is some Loch Ness monster type lore and it wasn't without validation there there were there were verifying accounts of this creature that all all pretty much described the same exact type of creature there was more than one person that was working at this station the head of the station saw the creature and they you know even though they're up in their station house and the water's way out there and the creature's way out there like they said, this thing was frightening. There's always been, there's always been something about, you know, the unknown. Like you see a shark pop up out of the water. It's like, whoa, cool. But you're not really scared. But then like a mystery creature's floating around in the water and all of a sudden it's like, this is kind of frightening. And I think it's, it's just the not knowing. When you don't know exactly what a creature is, you don't know what they're capable of. Maybe that creature can climb right out of the water, come up to your station house and eat you. I don't know. <laughs> um, so even to people that were up in the station house looking out on the water, this was frightening to them. And there was another 
corroborating story from a Native American uh, gentleman who lived in the area, which the story suggested that there was an old story uh, told by Native Americans who were, you know, indigenous to the area that, that there was a serpent of this type that floated out in the seas. And of course, as the article stipulated, none of the dumbass white men that lived in the area gave it any, gave it any credit or concern, you know, which pretty standard. It was like, ah, oh, it's just another, another, you know, story, another, another myth, another urban legend, whatever, whatever these, you know, men in, in that area or you know, men in general were thinking at the time. So they didn't give this story much credit. And here suddenly before their very eyes, this story was becoming a very real thing. And in particular, the story referenced another verifying case from a man who was Native American. Of course, being an article from 1903, they didn't use the term Native American. You can presume what term they used. And he said that he was, he was out on the sea in a canoe, just, you know, doing what you do in a canoe, canoeing about. And all of a sudden, this serpent popped up out of the water with a massive head like that of a horse and just scared the living crap out of him. He said he literally turned, flipped out of his canoe. He abandoned his canoe and just struggled to the shoreline. Hey, bus, I'm trying to tell some stories here. The buses are so much louder at night when there's nobody around. So yeah, so there was a, another verifying case from a local who happened to be Native American and was probably knowledgeable about this particular serpent creature, at least this, the story of it. And then he practically came face to face with it. And they said he like just nose dove. No, if nose dove is a term, he dove from his canoe and just swam away as quickly as he could. He was so frightened that he, he just bailed on his canoe and struggled back to the shoreline and just ran for it. He said he was just frightened beyond all reason. It was probably the scariest thing he'd ever encountered in his life. And I gotta tell you, you know, if I'm floating around in a canoe and just enjoying my day and suddenly a horse-headed serpent pops up out of the water, I'm probably not gonna be chill either. I'm gonna be trying to get the hell out of there. And who knows, maybe the horse-headed serpent was, was, was a docile creature. We can't really know, but it was such an in intriguing story to see something like that pop up. And to see it given vindication by multiple witnesses. Usually back then, today, you know, somebody comes out and says they saw something crazy like that. A lot of it's, it's either going to be just immediately dismissed or there's gonna be kind of a, a collective attitude that like, oh yeah, really? Oh, it was that big? Huh? Oh, it had a horse head. Yeah, I'm sure it had a horse head, Frank. I told you to stop drinking whiskey up in the station. Like, most people are gonna be skeptical. But this had, I mean, the story itself referenced three individuals, two people from the station and this Native American uh, individual who was out in his canoe. So the story, uh, showed at least three accounts of people vindicating that they saw this creature. They all gave the same description. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was more people in that general vicinity that had seen this creature. What was it? Really? Was it just some horse serpent hybrid? Did it just have a head that was kind of similar to a horse and that was the only way they could describe it, but it was still almost, I don't know, a fish-like horse head? I wouldn't really know how to describe that. I mean, who's to say exactly what they saw? And the overall story itself that I read didn't seem to really present any kind of bias about the story. It didn't, it didn't say it was ridiculous. It actually gave multiple accounts, so it kind of gave it some validity and expressed that the Native Americans that were living in the area, the last, oh my God, nobody can, dude, you need to get your car fixed. No joke, bro. You you need a fix. 
you whoa Bad things happen when you delay repairs to that point. Anyway, the last sentence, as I was getting to, of the article expressed simply that the Native Americans that lived in that area were just like terrified at the revelation. And of course, there's this, this, this story that's been passed down, but maybe a lot of people have never actually seen it. So it's easy to kind of not be bothered by it, but now it's all of a sudden like you're, you're getting the verification and it expressed that the Native Americans in the area, the people that were probably the most in the know about things like this, were terrified um, about this revelation. So that, that should tell you something. And I, I don't know if there were any follow-up stories. I don't know if this ended up being a big thing that was seen by a lot more people or that it, it garnered some attention it started becoming something that was more readily investigated maybe they figured out what it was uh to this point all i know is a couple of individuals all claim to see the same thing and two of them were people that worked in the same station but still generally the idea is that they all saw it at different times and there was really no corroboration between any of them. It did not seem at all like this was a, a trick or a hoax being put forward in terms of the sightings of this horse-headed serpent creature. So let that spin around in your mind for, for a while. What do you think it was? Do you think it's just a coincidence these people saw um, some kind of like random serpent creature and maybe they just all thought it looked like it had a horse head but it really didn't the, the story told by the native american in the canoe kind of implies that he was right next to it so he would have gotten an up close view granted it probably would have been a pretty traumatizing experience so maybe his memory would be a little bit you know that's very common when you experience kind of a crazy traumatic fight or flight experience you can kind of lose a little bit of your memory or mistake details but what are the odds that he that this individual would mistakenly describe a serpent in the same way that two completely unrelated guys working at the station would seems pretty unlikely so what do you think it is you think there's some strange breed of horse-headed serpents that were out there over a hundred years ago and maybe are still around to this day uh do you think maybe they were mistaken if this story's ringing a bell for you in terms of history, because I don't know anything about this beyond this story that I read, which is part of the charm of this series is finding one day referencing some instance. And a lot of these stories kind of begin and end with that article. But then there's stories like this where maybe more happened. If frogs, if you're in the know about this kind of stuff, you know, by chance, maybe you know a little bit more about the story. Maybe this became a bigger thing up Victoria, British Columbia way. Feel free to let me know in the comments. You'll be educating me a little bit more about this and educating my followers and subscribers and just people that stumble onto this video in general. I'd like to, of course I can do the research myself, but again, the purpose of this series is more about giving you this one story, this one time, one day in history. It's getting a little breezy. Hopefully it's not ruining my audio, but how could I pass up a horse-headed serpent story on a night like tonight? So I'd like to thank you guys so much as always for, for watching, for following the channel if you are, for supporting the channel. If you want to support me a little bit more and you haven't already, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon if you want to. The link is in the description below. Really helps me out. And I'm always posting, you know, new little things there to give you bang for your buck. The link to my Instagram and Facebook pages are also in the description below. Closely related to the content that I am producing both here as well as my primary channel, Steve the Amateur Historian. And all that said, I'd like to thank you one more time as my face fades into darkness for joining me today for a fun little story about serpents in uh, Canada. And all that said, this has been Steve, and I'll see you tomorrow.